by the, uh, uh, the White House Commission on Pacific Islanders. The president has uh, put forth this group. Uh, first of all, I should say, five times already since I got here, people have asked, that's really cool about the whole Asian American thing, but don't you actually have to be Asian American to be on it? <laughs> so, first of all, I should probably say that before I start going into this. Uh, my mom is, I am Asian American. Uh, my mom's from the Philippines. Um, she came here when she was very young, uh, all alone, no money, just to sort of make a better life for herself and um, make a better life for her future family, which, uh, so I'm incredibly appreciative. Um, I was born and raised here, uh, not looking like my cousins, not looking like my fam my extended family, not looking like my neighbors, my classmates, so uh, I think being alienated and uh, not included was a, was a really hard thing growing up, and, and all things diversity got very, very important to me very quick. Um, the, 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 the White House uh, Commission, though, um, was started by President Clinton, and uh, it was carried on by President Bush, and uh, President Obama uh, renewed it as well. And essentially, the president made it very clear that he just wants to make sure that no matter who you are, what you look like, where you're from, that America remains to be the place where you can make it if you try. Uh, he also charged us with being the eyes and ears of the Asian American community um, to help him in engaging the 30-some different ethnic groups that are considered Asian American and Pacific Islander throughout the country to help better their lives, but not just better their lives. There are many things that we're doing right now that we actually work with other cultures, other diverse back, diverse organizations and federal groups to help all people uh, with all things related to diversity. Workforce diversity, uh, data disaggregation, um, immigration. I actually got a phone call, it was the most shocking thing ever, that it just basically was from the White House and they said, the president would like to meet you tomorrow at 3.30. And I live here, and so I was like, I just heard my voice go, okay, and somehow I, I, I turned to my wife who's here, and I was like, I just realized that forever I've been using a backpack, and I have no bag. So we had to run and get a briefcase, and I put on a suit, and I made my way, and I had this very amazing, engaging uh, conversation where I got to bring forth all the wonderful things that I had uh, known from my family's background, from the Filipino community, and engage in this very diverse conversation about uh, immigration. So we do a lot of that. Um, so I got sworn in 18 hours later. I'm on a plane to Asia. I'm headed to work with different organizations to do some volunteering because when I land, it's the six month uh, date from when the actual typhoon occurred. I tried to go out the week of. Um, but they said that you'd be better off calculating how much you would spend and send a check because it was really hard to get things done there. Um, I worked with USAID. I was very excited to know that the United States was there first, the day right after the typhoon hit. Our uh, military was there. They brought life-saving support, uh, sanitation support, food, water, medical. Uh, it was really amazing to see because the place was just devastated. I mean, I think you've seen it all on the news, I don't want to get really into it, but I, people lost their homes, I was just in the middle of the streets, one-on-one -on -one with as many families as possible, um, with USAID, uh, who is our governmental arm, bringing $90 million in, in aid to, to throughout the Philippines of uh, damaged areas, and just assessing all the different um, issues and problems and, and rebuilding efforts. I worked with a group called Dalek Kalinga, which was a very uh, local group, which was really cool because they put, uh, put us together with actual families who lost their home, and we built their, their new home together. Um, I did fundraisers like uh, this, where I, uh, for American Red Cross, or Philippine Red Cross, so I checked on them. And I guess the reason I wanted to share that is because I know a lot of people aren't always sure where their money's going or what's really happening. And the one thing that I learned the most was that the Philippine people are so strong, so determined, so incredibly resilient, and so uh, passionate and driven to take anything from the stuff on the ground that they had to make quick shelter with and, and create these squatter-like houses um, because typhoon, high, typhoon season's coming in a couple more months to, um, 
to, to just any, any donations from people like you and really do so much with it. So as you go forth, I just wanted to let you know that yes, it was very devastating, it's horrible, but there's a tremendous amount of work going on. The United States was there first, the global community followed, everyone's working together, it's incredibly efficient, and there are a lot of things happening, and all the help that's happening around the world, including what's happening in this room tonight, is super special and positive, and I, and I saw it with my own eyes, and I truly do believe that it will go a long way. So I just wanted to let you know, from, from my eyes to yours. Uh, thank you.